Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. Today we're learning a new heart design, and this is basically what happens when you take a design called Heart Flow. It's a very flowing, undulating design, and you fill the hearts with pebbling, so lots of circles. It's a combination of a lot of travel stitching, a lot of different shapes, but it's going to come together and make a really beautiful design. So let's get on the machine and see how this works in Free Motion. So to get started, I'm going to stitch basically just a wiggly line. And now I'm going to flow around and into a heart. So I come up with those kind of heart pumps <laughs> and then come back to create, you know, kind of like a little wiggly line with the heart on the end, kind of like a balloon. Okay, so the main difference between this design and heart flow is I'm going to fill this heart shape with pebbling. And of course the heart is small, so the pebbles need to be kind of small too. They don't all have to be super tiny. You can make some of them big and some of them small. It's entirely up to you. I even have to cut some of them in half like that. The main thing is just careful stitching as you fill up the space completely. And even if you make a mistake, stitch outside the lines, you can most often get away with it. Uh, pebbling is one of those designs that's pretty forgiving, and you can also kind of just expand on the heart shape if you have to. That'll work fine too. It's just careful stitching, and then as I fill up one little area, I wiggle over here, a travel stitch, and start filling in this little area too. I kind of like the look of it whenever you have, you know, so kind of some big circles mixed in with some really tiny circles. I think that looks really good. It makes it look a little bit more zany, <laughs> which is where the name comes from. Okay, so now I'm going to travel stitch all the way back to get to this point right here. And this is where I'm going to start kind of branching out and building this up. All I'm going to do is just simply swing around for an echo go it all the way back down to the starting point. Now I'll travel stitch over and echo around again. I'm going to do this about three or four times, just hitting that point, swinging back, going all the way back to the starting point and then echoing around again. I want to surround that heart with rows and rows of echo quilting. It makes it stand out beautifully, it fills in more space, and it kind of gives your eye a place, you know, adds that movement, but it also gives your eyes a place to rest. The areas of pebbling are really, really intense, and so it's kind of nice to just expand on that, have several rows of stitching between this heart and the next one. Okay, so I've got a little weird area right here, I kind of want to fill that in. I can easily do that by stitching a wiggly line in here and some echoes. So I'm going to stitch out, kind of wiggle around, and form a heart coming this way. And that's the thing, sometimes you have to kind of get creative as to where you put your next heart. That looks good though. Now I'm going to fill it up with pebbling too. And you know, with, with this design, you really don't want to have to obsess too much about, you know, having a space to get in or out of the heart shape, you can use all the edges. So if I work my way over here and fill in completely with pebbling, I'm not too worried about getting locked into the shape. I can always travel stitch my way back out along the edges of the heart or along the pebbling. Um, there's no such thing as getting kind of lost or locked into this design. You just want to continue to fill it and try and keep it consistent. But sometimes you are going to have to chop some uh, pebbles in half, some circles in half, in order to fill in completely. So like right here I've got this little gap, I'm just going to kind of swing over just a bit into it and that will fill it in. And pebbling is one of those designs, if you start breaking thread as you stitch it, it's usually a good sign that your thread is a little too thick or a little too weak for free motion quilting. Uh, I struggled with this design when I first started quilting because I was using cotton thread that was just too thick for the job. 
and every time I tried to do this kind of intense travel stitching, my thread would break uh, almost immediately. It was very annoying, uh, but it was one of those lessons that I learned early on uh, that you have to use what thread works and find what works on your machine, and it's different for every machine. It's worth testing and playing with it until you find a thread that won't break like that. Okay, so at this point, all I have to do is just simply fill in this area with rows of echo quilting, and that's going to fill in and kind of build up the space and make this heart shape expand until it fills up completely. Travel stitching very carefully along this other heart shape. And then swinging out and around. And coming like this, it just takes practice. I certainly was not able to do this when I first started quilting. Uh, and it's kind of hard to describe exactly what I'm looking at as I do it kind of looking at the space between the needle and the line of stitching that I'm echoing. I'm not really looking, staring at my needle. I'm not really staring, you know, too far ahead. And it's one of those things that just kind of come, it's almost like, um, I guess, hitting a ball in baseball. You kind of have to estimate the space and estimate your swing and all that kind of comes into a calculation in your head you don't even think about. Uh, and you get good at it the more you do it. Um, I was terrible at baseball, <laughs> if that's comforting to you at all. I was absolutely terrible at it, and uh, more often I just got hit by the ball rather than actually uh, hitting it with a baseball bat, so it's one of those things that I might be good at this, but I'm definitely not good at other things that require the same kind of space estimation. So that is basically the general flow of this Zany Hearts design. Here's what it looks like whenever you finish it. So that's it for Zany Hearts. I really hope that you enjoyed learning this design and I hope you liked my little analogy with hitting a ball in baseball. I hope that maybe uh, helps you understand what echo quilting is like. You know, it's one of those things that the first time you do it might feel really uncomfortable. Uh, you might get kind of hit by the ball. <laughs> uh, but the more you do it, uh, the better you're going to get at it. And the, the main thing is just don't obsess about um, the perfection or lack thereof. Uh, if your lines get closer together or further apart, I think for this particular design it's going to actually make it look better, even more organic and beautiful. So uh, don't get too nitpicky and certainly don't pick up your seam ripper. That's not the point of quilting. The point is to stitch something beautiful that you've made yourself. So not stitching necessarily something perfect. So my name is Leah Day and this has been a video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. Find hundreds of videos, beautiful free motion quilting designs, all with free videos for you to enjoy. Find that at freemotionproject.com. Also check out leahday.com for your find a quilt shop dedicated to carrying all the tools, materials for free motion quilting on your home sewing machine. The quilt shop supports the free motion quilting project and allows me to post all of these videos for free. So thank you for your support. And until next time, let's go quilt.